this video is to show how I take data on Edmark. You can take Edmark data on the book that's provided for you. Um, I don't necessarily use this book because when I was taught how to take data on Edmark, I was taught differently. So if you use this book, that's great. If you if this book is confusing and you are trying to find a different way to take data, um, I'm just going to show you how I take my data. So I have two papers. One of these papers is just our 20 track goal. So it's each time we do a new lesson, we will write it on the board. So if you're doing word recognition one, which is the first one in this book, right? Lesson one, we are recognizing words. So we will put word recognition, W-R, number one. Word recognition one. The way you take data is every time they get one correct, you are gonna put a plus sign if they get it right. If they get it wrong, so if you say, for example, point to horse, they pointed to horse, plus, point to horse, they point here, you mark a negative, point to horse, and you prompt right away. You don't mark your prompt, you just keep going. So for number three, find horse, or point to horse, horse, and then you would write a plus, point to horse, horse, you'd write a plus, read, horse, perfect, plus, horse, right, negative, because they pointed to the wrong one, horse, and prompt immediately, horse, prompt immediately, horse, good, and you would go that way until you get to number 11, so if they got plus, they got all the rest of them right, and then you would write their total at the bottom. So if we're going based off this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you write eight out of 10. And then you would get your calculator and you would do the percentage, right? 80%. And then you would write your date. So today is 414. So that's your data sheet. So then you would go onto your graph and you would graph it. I like to start my graph zero is right before 10, that way it's 10%, sorry, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, and 100. So I would write the date on the bottom. So we put 4, 14, word recognition one at the top. So your chart would look like this. Word recognition, date, and then we're gonna graph it. So we're gonna graph 80%. And there's our dot and then we would graph the next day so if the next day they got a little bit better and they got 90 percent and if the next day they got 90 percent and then they got a hundred right then you would track how long it took them to get to mastery level and then i would do dotted lines down and we would start at word recognition two so this is your data for word recognition one, and then you would start your data for word recognition two. That's how I take data on word recognition. I'm gonna show you how I take it when we do picture match, since that is our next step. So for picture match, our first one is the one that has one single, and then you match the letter, and then you have two that you're reading, and then you match the two pictures. For this, I would take so if you're putting them out, we'll just demonstrate, All right? They read a horse match or find it, All right? They've got a horse, they match the horse. Oh, sorry. So for a picture match, we would put PM, picture match, and this would be five. So picture match five. They read a horse plus, they matched it. You give them another plus. So this would always be two pluses, one for reading and one for the picture, right? You would do these two, say they read them right. So we're up to six data points now. Two, four, six, and then we're gonna do four, say they match, we're gonna do eight. When we get to the one that has two different words or two different segments, we are going to take data as follows. So they would read a horse, a car, find it, a horse, a car. So you would take one data point for each section that they read and then one data point for each picture that they matched. Then we get down here, 
say they read it. A car, a horse, right? Plus, plus. They match the car, but they don't match the horse. It would be a plus for one and then a negative for the other one. And then again, you would just track this. So this is 16, they got one wrong. So 15 out of 16. And then you would date it. And then you would move on. I only pass my kids when they get 90% two times or 100% the first time. When we get to our picture match recognitions that have the word and in it, it gets a little bit trickier. So that they are gonna need to get both of the pictures right to get the plus sign for the picture match. So we have, right? And depending on the level your kid is at is gonna depend how many distractors you put out. I'm just putting out three, that's usually the minimum. If your kid is advanced, you can put out all of the cards or five cards or six cards, whatever you think their field is. So for this one, we're gonna read a ball and a car. Perfect, they read all of it, so we would write a plus, right? A ball, so they got the ball, and then they just look at you, right? Done! You would say, let's read again, and then you would mark a negative because they were not able to get both of the pictures. So you would read a ball and a car. They grab the ball, you can immediately point prompt, you can position it so they know, you can tap at the word, either way works, and then they would just match a car and a ball. If they match it and it's this way, that's fine too. A ball and a car, there's a ball and a car. Unless position matters. So when we get to the word in um, or out or next to or next, right? Like all those words that have positional, they would need to be in it. So if it said a ball in the car, then they would need to put the ball in the car, right? This wouldn't work because the ball is not in the car. The ball needs to go in the car. Perfect. Okay, that is with the word and. We'll move on to phrase matching. So when we do phrase matching, it's the same thing as if you're doing the picture matching. You're gonna hand them a card, they're gonna read a box. If they read that right, they would get a plus. And for phrase matching, I put PH, phrase, PHM, phrase matching 19 is this one. So you get to less than 19, that's where we're gonna go. So phrase match 19, a box plus, they match it to the picture plus, All right? They read yellow fish and they match to the blue fish. You would say, let's read yellow fish. And then you can immediately point prompt, but they would always get the negative mark because they matched incorrectly. So that one's kind of the same. Oops, I'm putting the wrong things in here. Um, that data is pretty easy. The data that gets a little harder and a little confusing is when we take story data. So when we do story data, this is gonna be a little trickier. We're gonna read and you are gonna take data for each word. So when you take data for each word, you can have a clicker, you can have um, a post-it note and just tally every word that they get correct. I don't take data on this sheet because it would, when you get to long stories, you were gonna have to take a lot of data. So I'm gonna grab a quick, I'm just gonna grab this little white, white card. So we're gonna read a car, uh, so we're just gonna take data where we do it. A car and a boy. I see a yellow car and a boy. So we got all of them right, five, 10, 13, so put 13 words. And usually I will just write little notes when we're doing stories. So I would put story number one, lesson 10. So you read 13 words, there's 13 words. So 13 words read independently. And then you can ask them questions. What color is the car? Yellow. Who is next to the car? A boy. 
what do you see? A yellow car. Those questions you can also add up. So you can put um, independently answered questions, comprehension questions. Um, move on to next lesson. And then I would just date it. Um, that way I know that we did the stories. We have a little note. If your notes get longer, I would suggest maybe just taking up two rows um, because when you get to stories that are this long, right? Less than 33, it's two pages and it's all of these letters or all these words that you're gonna have to take data on. So what I would recommend, the easiest thing I have found is having a clicker with you and just clicking it every time they read. It's also very reinforcing for them to hear that click. So that's how you take data on the questions. There are questions for each story on the back of the books. If those are too complicated or they seem confusing, you can always ask your own questions, right? So if we're here, for example, I find a banana in the car. What did you find in the car? What do you see in the box? What color is the pencil? Is there a fork? No, right, there's a spoon. So all of those questions, those are comprehension questions as long as you're answering them correctly and can figure it out based on the text. That is appropriate. Okay, let's see. What is next? We went over the story, this, that. Oh, how I keep my data. So I have a binder that has all of my students' names and I have copies of the data sheet. I have copies of our graph in case I need more. Um, the other thing I use, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, I apologize, but I'll mention it now. When I have my folder, I will take data on this as well. So this is a list, a tracker list. This tells you when you started it and when your student met their goal. Um, this student is far advanced, so he advanced pretty quickly. We just did pros test and then he passed these tests and then this. So we are on lesson 42 now with him. So I always keep it tabbed by their name. Their graph is in the back, right? So all of our data sheets that I've ever taken are in this little section for him. If his parents need to know, hey, where, where are they at? How, how have they been progressing? Are they regressing, right? You can go look at the data and see kind of where they're at. This student is excellent. <laughs> There's 100%. But if we go to this other student, right? They've been stuck on, oh, actually, this student. They've been stuck on one for a little bit, but you can see in the graph that they go up and down and then they reach, or this one's our picture matching one, right? There's picture matching, but we just have to make sure that we take data so that we are aware of where our students are and we are not advancing them before or if we're making sure that they're progressing at the right pace. So all of our students are tabbed. They all have their target list. They all have their graphs and they all have their data sheets. They're all tabbed here neatly so I can find them pretty easily. Um, and then they're all in one secure place. I'm trying to think if there's any other questions you all might have. Um, I think that should be good. If you do have any other questions, you can always email me. You can reach out to one of the supervisors and have them reach out to me. Um, if not, that is gonna be the end of the video. So yeah, thank you so much. And I hope that this helped 